shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part 7 of the P40F build. So in part 6, it was all about getting the National Insignias placed. This time out, we're going to be moving into the camouflage. Now, I don't know, as I'm filming this, if this is going to be the whole camouflage, or if this is just going to focus on the Azure on the undersides. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, to start with the Azure and the Silver Base, I'm not going to start out spraying Azure itself straight away. My plan is to start with some MRP 66 RLM 76. Now for the first bit of this, I'm gonna avoid the leading edge of the wings because there's gonna be chipping and stuff that's gonna be happening there. And I need to put hairspray down before I really do any of that. Basically, this is just a nice general coat. Not too thick, not too opaque. Starting to layer in some colors, essentially. Yeah, shut up, compressor. Okay, so the RLM76 is kind of down, kind of doing its thing. But before I go too much further, I really need to stop and deal with this little light here. Trumpeter gives you a clear piece to put over it, which is awesome. I think there's even a mask, like a little dot to put on top of it, etc., etc. But first we need to paint the lens housing silver. So I'm going to be using some good old Gaia Premium Mirror Chrome. This stuff shines up like nobody's business, which makes it really good for these things. And it also doesn't need gloss black. It just kind of takes over whatever you're spraying it on. So we're going to let it do its thing. Okay, let's give that a few minutes and just kind of avoid that area until we can get the uh, clear part on there and masked up and all happy and good to go. All right, mischief has been managed with that light. So let's go ahead and start spraying some international blue. goal with the International Blue is to basically break things up quite a bit so we have an interesting palette to be putting the Azure down over and then like around the insignia down here. This is a great way to sort of darken this up. All right, so I've got a nice mess of RLM76 and International Blue kind of crisscrossing and modeling up the underside of the P40. Next, we're gonna move into our Azure Blue. And I'm just gonna come in here and this is gonna be sort of misted on top. building opacity using the 
blues underneath to maintain tonal variation. Some interesting looking stuff. This has already given me a pretty good lesson for the upper surfaces. Because this is still a pretty wide gulf to close in a lot of places here. So I'm developing a theory of the case kind of as I do this. We might have a case for some sort of sandwich shading going on here. All right, so after one dropper of Azure, here's where we stand. And I'm not sure how well this is catching the light. So let's give it some different angles here. As you can see, it is a broken up surface. Um, but I'm finding that the Azure covers much better over the International Blue than over the RLM 76 and the Silver. So I'm thinking when I go around to the upper surfaces, I'll probably be using some sort of a deeper brown than a lighter tone under the middle stone. I'm also thinking about doing what I'm just going to go ahead and start calling sandwich shading, which is now that this base coat of Azure is going down, coming in on top of the Azure and adding more stuff and then adding more Azure on top of that because we'll already have the Azure base coat kind of in place. And so we can really curve that shot a lot more. Um, basically, it's halfway between pre-shading and post-shading because it's pre-shading the second coat, but it's post-shading the first coat. So sandwich shading sounds fun. And now I'm hungry. Okay, so I've got the Azure base down on the underside of the P40, and now the fun begins. So as I was musing about earlier, in the past, with black basing, this is probably where I would have stopped. However, going from a silver base and building up from that, and having the RLM 76 and the International Blue kind of putting contrast in different places here, gave me this idea that once the Azure was a bit more established, I could come back on top of it with even more tones and more contrast, and really make it look more natural than trying to cover up a bunch of you know, contrasting stuff with sort of a uniform coat, which led me to this idea of doing something that is sort of post-shading the base coat while pre-shading a final blend coat, um, which I'm calling sandwich shading. Now, it may well fail, uh, and if it does, I'll just increase the Azure and kind of cover it up a bit, but if it doesn't fail, if it does work the way I think it's going to work, it could be pretty fucking awesome, and this might inform the way that I paint builds from now on. So... Let's give it a shot, shall we? Now, first thing I'm going to do is take a bit of SCC Blue Black, which is like a kind of a grayish black. And I'm going to add some of this to the Azure. So I'm going to use this to darken the areas around the roundels to represent sort of that overpainting that happened. That's sort of the fresher coat of Azure. Now, I don't really have any good photos of these roundels on the underside, frustratingly. But just looking at the way that the roundels are handled up top, the paint is noticeably fresher and it's very haphazardly applied. So. so I'm going to grab this awesome stencil mask. Just kind of set it down here over this little hump behind the ejection rejection ports and just give it a little spritz nothing too fancy okay so I've cranked it way down on the Mac valve which is going to give us a sort of a spattery effect as we spray and just kind of help grunge up the surface get some on the flaps I don't want to go too heavy with this stuff, but I do want to make it seem nice and battered and beat up.
Okay, next I'm gonna bring in some RAF Marking Blue, which as you can see has some of those similar purple tones to the Azure. We're gonna come in here and some of the areas where we had International Blue before. Add some of this stuff to it in a few places. And now we're going to come back and complete the sandwich with some highly thinned azure blue. Okay, so I'm going to keep blending this and we'll pick back up in a few minutes as this blend coat nears completion. Okay, I've got this thing just about where I want it and I'm doing some final stippling with the very thinned azure blue. Okay, the final olive on the toothpick of this sandwich is going to be taking some Guns Mr. Color C370 Azure, which is way darker than that, and using it to do the fresh paint around the roundels. And it's thinned down basically just enough to spray competently, but I'm not doing it super thin or anything because I want the whole concept of like, this is fresh paint. Okay, so the Azure sandwich has been assembled, the underside wing roundel masks have been removed, and here we are at the end of this stage of paint. Now, going into this, I knew that Azure was gonna be an interesting color to paint, and it did not um, disprove me of that notion whatsoever. And actually going over a silver base instead of going over a black base, as I typically do, uh, pulled me out of my comfort zone and got me to a point where some magic happened in sort of a combination of different elements that resulted in what I'm calling sandwich shading. So when I sprayed the RLM 76 and the international blue and then put the Azure on top of it, the Azure definitely had some trouble bridging that gap between those two wildly different shades and getting it to that point where it was bridging them and not looking awkward was getting to the point where we were starting to blow out what was actually going on underneath. And that gave me the idea of why do I just have to have one underlayer and one blend coat? And why couldn't I sandwich them and put some more stuff on top of the Azure since the Azure was established at that point and then put the blend coat on? And so that's exactly what I did. And yeah, I am calling it sandwich shading because it is a sandwich of basically of the 
of the main coat as sort of a base coat and then as a top coat with stuff underneath the base coat and stuff in between the two, so like a sandwich. I think it worked out really well. Uh, you know, if you get in here really close, I hope the image sensor picks this shit up, uh, you can see a lot of little, little contrast variations going on in here, like, you know, on the flaps, up here around the ejection ports. There's just a lot of it. And it really, really gives the impression of a sort of battered, dinged-up, focusy piece of shit. Um, battered, dinged-up, war-weary paint. And then using the guns, Mr. Color Azure, for the fresh paint around the roundels, where they overpainted the previous markings, I think works really well, too, because that extra purple-lavender look, while I don't want that for the whole underside, I think it works really well as a little bonus element right there. So with that, I am going to go ahead and call this episode a wrap, and we will pick back up in the next installment, dealing with the upper surfaces, and middle stone in particular, and leading edge chipping, which, uh, if you're wondering why I didn't do chipping on the underside, basically, it's tough to get a really good look at French P40s from this particular angle where you can see what all is happening at the leading edge right on the underside of it. But on other camo schemes and other reference photos, P40 camouflage typically wrapped around the upper surface to the leading edge and sort of maybe not into the underside, but definitely it owned the leading edge of the wing. And you know, I'd say it probably carries down to about maybe just under the horizon of the guns, if that. And so it just makes more sense, I think, to deal with the chipping up here in along this leading edge, because that's where you see most of it. If you look at undersides of aircraft, even really good reference photos, you just don't see as much stuff down there on the leading edge. It's all, you know, it's all leading edge, and then once you get underneath, it seems to be okay. So, at least I'm hoping that's the case. Anyway, that is the Azure Adventure, so stick around. I uh, hope this was useful, and we will be back to carry on the wonderful painting work with the middle stone in the next installment. Thanks for watching, and catch you later. Okay, so I've got the Azure base down, oh, blah, blah, blah. Fucking hell.